who can be actually like first time pro bowlers on right. this team because well, there is potential for a lot of guys. Right. Yeah, now. We did get some all-star announcements yesterday, right. Mm-hmm. With baseball, um, Shota Imanaga for the Cubs and Garrett Crochet for the White Sox. Maybe they just did that, you know, as a consolation prize. Every yeah. team has you, to have yeah, a you have representative. To have one. Yeah. But he, he, I think he showed even a, start that game, Garrett well, Crochet. Yeah. Like, that's how good he's been. And show it up in his own right. If you take away his two bad starts, his ERA is like yeah. 191. Yeah, I think they probably mm-hmm. would have earned it regardless of the every team mandatory. So, yeah, it did get us thinking a little bit of who's going to be the all-stars or, or pro bowlers mm-hmm. here for the Bears potentially this season. How many – Pro Bowlers did we have last year? So in 2023, you had Montez Sweat and right. Jalen Johnson. In 2022, it's, you had Roquan Smith. He was traded, but I think he still technically goes down as a Bear slash Raven as a Pro Bowler. And yeah, then yeah. before that in 2021, Robert Quinn. And if someone can get this in the chat, I will. <laughs> oh, like, man. Come on. Who, who's who, the other Pro Bowler who from 2021? The- if someone can put this in the chat. In like the next ten seconds, you are a real one. Um, let's see it. Let's see. I mean, I doubt yeah, it. they're gonna Google. Yeah, you're definitely gonna. Somebody's Google. gonna Google it. But I mean, if somebody if gets Google it right it off fast, the top of their yeah. head, yeah, like Gary, I would expect. To. I know it. It would be coming in about right now if you knew it off the top of your head. Just saying. That's why we'll let people see who comes up with it first in the okay. chat to give a shout out. We won't spoil it. But yeah, like who is gonna be Pro Bowlers <laughs> this year? Um, you know, people are guessing scales and Trubisky. Nothing yet, no, nope, nothing nope. there. But um, ah, you know, so, Sergio, Sergio so, Silva, and that is ja- 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 Jakeem Grant, Jakeem Grant, all time great Chicago Bear. He scored a touchdown against the Packers in the night game, I believe, or maybe that was not Jakeem. Was that Grant. um, or was that somebody? Co- no, was that Tyler Bird? That was that's a real guy, right? Bird? No. Bird? No. No? No, you just made that name up. I did not. Did real I name. really? Yeah. Bird. I think there was a... Demir. Demir Bird. Is that that's maybe a per- That's a person. Yeah. Maybe he scored a touchdown. He had the, the touchdown against the Seahawks in the back of the end zone. Oh, that was a crazy catch, too. Um, But no, getting back to who I think potentially... So I think Jalen Johnson, Montez Sweat, you know, could run it back for sure. Um, Daniel Bird? Rooting for Tyreek Stevenson. Be tough, though. I mean, wasn't DJ more robbed of a pro? I mean, when you put in some of his, I mean, there were a lot of good wide receivers. There were a lot of good wide receivers putting up numbers, but DJ had a career year in catches, yards, touchdowns, yep. and he did not make a Pro Bowl. So I think that's another guy. Well, it might be tougher, though, this year because you do have Keenan Allen. You do have Roma Dunze. Mm-hmm. So that might make it a little tougher for a guy like DJ to make a Pro Bowl. It being heard in the chat saying TJ Edwards could easily yes. make the Pro Bowl, should have last year. Yep. I think that's a very good uh, name there. Ken Tremaine Edmonds, who we just had on recently, you know, breakthrough with the Bears mm-hmm. as a Pro Bowler. If Jaquan Brisker stayed healthy Ooh. for a whole season. I think you could say that about him and Tevin Jenkins. I was just about to say that. I think that. if yeah. either guy stayed healthy for a whole season – they could be set up for a Pro Bowl type of year. Yeah. This is where I get in trouble, though, because I could pick, like, <laughs> eight guys. Kari Blessing game, Pro Bowl. Yeah, Kari, of course. Um, no, I do like the Tevin Tevin Jenkins play. If you put him in, again, if he plays a majority of a season, like, that's Pro Bowl-level talent. We know that. We've seen him dominate games, the physicality that he plays with, what he does for the run game. What also he can do is a pass blocker. But at some point, there is it's in his career something has derailed him, where he hasn't been able to keep up that consistent play. But when he's on the field, like you have a, a dominant guard, but that's that's always going to be the thing with Tevin. I don't know if there's anybody that were is any. What about Kyler Gordon? I like I like the Kyler Gordon. I like the Kyler Gordon thought. <clears throat> to your point about Tevin, when he's healthy, he's one of your best players on the field. Yes. Um, so I, I do like that one. I think Kyler certainly could break through. The one statement I made last year was, if you're not going to take the top defensive tackle available, a three technique, mm-hmm. and pass on that and take Darnell Wright, then you're, if you're going to take a right tackle in the top ten, then he eventually better be one of the top right tackles in the league. And I do think 
<clears throat> Darnell Wright is trending in the right direction. I think yeah. he showed more than enough last year to have you excited about his future as a Bear. But it would be cool. We're talking about Tevin Jenkins, and he could if he could if he could stay healthy. Well, with Darnell Wright, the injury isn't as much of a concern. Mm-hmm. So if he could make that jump here in year two at, to become one of the top right tackles in the league and become a pro ball, bowler, that's going to make me feel even better than I already do to this point about the decision to draft on our right in the top 10. And, and he kind of had a little bit of a slow start. He saw some of those false start penalties. Our own Corey Wooten draft night when they when they take him, he said pro bowler year one. Now, that didn't happen, but it's a pretty lofty statement as a, a rookie pro bowler, which kind of brings me to my next point. There's one name you guys haven't said yet. Oh, Cole Komet. No, Caleb Williams. You guys. Oh, we're da- wow. Well, because we're okay. scared. Right. Okay. We're scared, scared Stephen. We, of <laughs> course, we could say Caleb Williams, but we don't want to jinx it. Because every year we talk all this shit, <laughs> and then the season starts, and we get smacked in the mouth. And so everybody's like super positive, but no, we're no. also you're being wearing super... the Meatball Island shirt, right? Damn it. I want Meatball. Yes, there. <laughs> it was, it been, Bears fans have been super positive for the last two months, but they've also been super quiet, and it's honestly been disgusting. <laughs> Normally, we are swearing at anyone that doubts us. We're writing all sorts of checks that then the team has to cash, and then when the season starts. Three games into the year, we want to fire everyone, bench everyone, hellfire and brimstone, and the Packers fans are laughing at us. But not this year. This year, we are going to keep our mouths shut. Silent assassins. Until the season starts. We're not going to get overhyped. We're going to have a calming confidence about ourselves. We're going to walk into the season and do what we haven't done the last few years and not let us down and actually live up to some kind of expectation. Greg, I'm going to call you on your bullshit right yeah. <laughs> now because as soon as the first training camp practice ends and Caleb lights it up, oh, I know. my God, it's going to be ama- It's going to be great to watch. It's going to be fun to watch. It was like, who's, who's going to mess with the Bears? Right. We're, it's going to be fun. We're all kind of at like 10 wins for the season, essentially. Yeah. And every day of practice, like how many wins will I have it up to by the end of the camp? And then Will Carm, who's always the cynical one, have it, like, whittled down. Mm. Like, I think that's kind of where you find the gauge. Find that balance. Because, like, last year at camp, every day that passed, I get more and more excited. I'm just so excited to that's be natural. there. Yeah. Every positive play, I, I, I just take too much from it. Then you turn around, and Carm's like, this team sucks. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. And he's, like, giving you shit <laughs> about being too excited. And so... You have to find that middle. So he correctly predicted them to win seven games. Yeah, kudos. To and him. so we all said like nine or ten or whatever. Mm-hmm. So you're like trying to find that happy medium. So we all, when the schedule release came out, said around ten wins. But it the line's probably going to move up as camp and preseason unfold. It's just it's our natural state of being as Bears fans. We get. We get too excited every offseason. Well, we just read off how this was one of the worst statistical years in Chicago sports history. We need to have something to look forward to, and training camp br- provides that that hope, that 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 maybe dream that the Bears can actually have a good season. And yep. they do have look; they do have legit players on this team, and we just gotta see how things kind of all come together to see if they can actually. You no know, cash those checks. Steve thirty four Bears in the chat saying if Caleb is the Bears' first four thousand yard passer, he'll get a Pro Bowl nod for sure. I mean, to me, of course, if Caleb does things that no Bears quarterback has ever done in the history of the franchise, you know, we saw Matt Eberflus is the front runner for you know odds on favorite yeah, to win Coach of the Year. Like all of these things go hand in hand. If Caleb Williams is able to do things that no player is a quarterback has ever done statistically for the Bears, he'll get rookie of the year. He'll get a Pro Bowl nod. Eberflus will get coach of the year. Ryan Poles will get executive of the year. That like all of those things kind of just work together. I don't know if Caleb even has to go for four thousand yards to get named to the Pro Bowl because we saw Trubisky do it with less. Oh, yeah. And Caleb is Yeah, I mean that's kind of the, the outlier. NFC too, the NFC though too. Like you're thinking about the quarterbacks that are going to be at the top of that lit. I mean. What you would think maybe like Dak Prescott after a good year, Jalen Hurts, 
Uh, Jordan Love, Jared Goff. Well, okay, so I mean, there's there's a couple of guys that you would have to actually, you know, obviously compete with well, to and, get to and, that. Right, and to your point, Stephen, about you know um, Trubisky making it. Well, it, it, you become an alternate. So, like, I think in this discussion, the way we're framing it is essentially they didn't make it as an alternate. They were you know, clear cut guy, like because okay. it's gotten a little right. watered down a little bit. At the end of the day, once they make it, we're like, hey, he was a pro bowler. We use that as our ammo the next offseason. Uh, but just for the sake of this discussion, just to kind of lay the groundwork correctly, I think saying that not as an alternate, but as, you know, a, a legit pro bowler. We all silly like the mayor.